Today we are especially honored to have a special guest speak to the students of the University of American College, Skopje. Um, I'm really pleased to um, announce the speech of um, Ambassador Aiko Ora, head of the EU delegation to Macedonia. Um, as you know, we have a long tradition of inviting ambassadors to speak to the students of the University of American College. Uh, but today we have this um, uh, first opportunity to have the Ambassador of the EU to speak to you. Um, His Excellency Ambassador Ora has a long and distinguished career with the, first with the Estonian Foreign Ministry. He has served um, as an ambassador to many countries, um, including Azerbaijan, uh, Lebanon, Poland, Turkey, Syria, um, and now he's in Macedonia as an EU uh, ambassador. Uh, so following his speech, I'm uh, very much sure that you will be uh, interested to ask questions. Um, the usual format is that he will give the speech for about 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll have a question and answer session for about 15 minutes. Hopefully we will finish by one o'clock. So ambassador, Dear Professor Kodowski, ladies and gentlemen, students, I'm very glad to be here today in the University of American College Skopje. And I am going to tell you about the European Union enlargement, enlargement yesterday, today, tomorrow. One may ask why I'm talking about Europe in American University, but there are many reasons. First, this university is in Europe. Second, your country's future is in Europe, European Union. And uh, third, the United States and the European Union have very close and coordinated policy together in many parts uh, of the world. First, we are sharing the same values, what many other countries are doing. But second, we have also very well coordinated foreign policy in many many countries, particularly now after the external action service of the European Union was established. About the European Union, this project, what was established years ago, is a unique one. It's a peace project. Today, Germans and French, they are working together and nobody from them is thinking that they may attack each other. But as you remember, all the major wars Wars in Europe started between Germany and France. So European Union, first of all, is a peace project to calm down those big nations and not to uh, let them fight with each other. And now, just half a year ago, the European Union was awarded with the Nobel Prize. There were many skeptical attitudes, many people were asking why Europe got this Nobel Prize just now when there are so many problems in the European Union, but we still have to keep in mind what happened 60 years ago, how Europe looked like 60 years ago. Today, even if there are some problems with the economy here or there, this peace is still in Europe. Europe hasn't seen any wars after the Second World War. European Union has many different policies, agricultural policy, uh, transport policies, so on, but the most successful policy of the European Union has been enlargement policy. The European Union itself has benefited so much from it, and countries which have joined the European Union after its establishment have benefited very, very much from this policy. Before the European Union, there was European Community. The European Union, as such, was created only in 1991, but after the Second World War, when the European Union, the European Community was created, there were only six members. Now, 1991, when the European Union was created, there were 12 members. So six who joined the European Union after, all of them had their own problems. United Kingdom joined the European Union, and as you may know, they were rejected first because France said that no way, your place is not in Europe. But you, uh, United Kingdom 
worked, applied, and finally got the membership in the European Union. Greece, Portugal, they had their own problems, but becoming a member of the European Union, it strengthened their democracy, and now as being full members of the European Union, nobody thinks that there is no democracy in those countries. And then Denmark, Spain, and Ireland had joined also before 1991. There was another enlargement 1995 when three countries joined. Austria, Finland, Sweden. All three are neutral countries, as you know, so they have declared that in case of war, they are not going to participate in the wars, they are neutral. And uh, maybe not so much in Austria, but in Finland, Sweden, even European Union was seen by public that they are going to take a side if they are going to participate uh, in the structures of the European Union. So there was a very very wide public discussion before in those countries whether to join or no, but they did it. At the same time, Norway was also applying membership in the European Union. They went through the negotiation process, but on the last moment there was referendum in Norway and Norwegians, more than 50 percent, of no way we don't need European Union. Uh, they didn't need because this is a rich country, it's a democratic country, there were a lot of problems with fishery, with other European Union countries, so, and of course the politicians have to respect what people, uh, people think. At the same time, Norway prepared itself during the negotiation process in this way that this country de facto is like European Union country. And also they share many policies of the European Union, uh, for example, they are part of Schengen, if you have Schengen visa, you don't need to apply uh, the same visa, uh, Norwegian visa to visit the country. 2004, there was very big enlargement. Ten countries joined. Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Slovenia from Balkans, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Cyprus and Malta. All of those countries made a very if it went through a very difficult reformation process. When negotiations started in 1997 with those countries, then international press mentioned only three countries, Poland, Czech Republic, Hungary. Because first of all, they were the biggest ones, and second, the Germany very much was fighting to get Poland in. The others, Slovenia, Estonia, Cyprus, they were not and as I'm coming from this small country, Estonia, where we have only 1.2 million people, it was more or less clear for us we don't get the European Union if we will be not the best one in the class. And our policy was very clear. All the reforms, everything that was requested from process, we had to be the first one. We had to finalize everything perfectly, 120%, and this guaranteed the way for this country to become a member of the European Union at that time. 2007, we had so far last enlargement, Bulgaria and Romania. And now in 1st of July, uh, Croatia will join the European Union. I have heard it many times and I know when my country was applying for membership in the European Union, we thought that we have to do much more than previous countries who joined the European Union had to do. But this is right, because the European Union is changing, legislation is changing, policies are changing, so that all other countries who are joining, they are requested to do more and more. So that it means that if your country is waiting a long time more, then you have to do much, much more. What were the differences? When uh, Sweden and Finland joined, they didn't commit themselves to join Europe. So. In Finland there is euro, but in Sweden there is no euro and the public opinion is such that they are never going to accept euro. When 10 countries joined, then in accession treaty, accession treaty those 10 countries committed to join eurozone. But all of them have done it so far because we have now euro in Slovenia, Estonia, Cyprus and Slovakia, but commitment is there and they have to choice one day. Maybe today is not the best time because there is a lot of, lot of uh, negative attitudes towards the Eurozone, that there are problems here or there, 
so that the governments, of course, they understand they have to do it, but they have to find the best time when to do it. In case of Bulgaria, for example, they were requested to close down the nuclear power station, uh, but was not requested. It was requested also in case of Lithuania before. But this was something new, and of course there are a lot of problems now in Bulgaria. You have seen those uh, street protests last month, and maybe this is also kind of result of this policy or this requirement of the European Union. The problem was that this nuclear station uh, was not up to the European Union standards and this requirement was uh, asked from uh, European Union side. So I described the situation of the EU enlargement in the past, now where we are at the moment, today. As I mentioned, Croatia from former Yugoslavia is going to join in few months time, so that there will be Slovenia and Croatia in uh, already. There are still five candidate countries who are knocking on the door of the European Union, and, uh, and there is different dynamic with all those countries. Turkey. Turkey has done it for decades already. They are looking forward to become a member of the European Union, Negotiations were started in the same day when negotiations started with Croatia. However, those negotiations are not moving very quickly. In Turkey, there is attitude that the European Union is not willing to take a Muslim country in. I think this is absolutely not correct. Every country has just to finalize the reforms and uh, finalize the negotiations. But there is clear problem with Cyprus. Turkey has to open its ports for Cyprus, and in this case, the negotiations can move forward. So that uh, in the case of Turkey, several negotiating chapters are blocked by uh, some European Union member states. There is nothing to negotiate anymore because European Union uh, is not opening those chapters for negotiations. Iceland. Ice like, like Norway was not seeking membership in the European Union. But the financial crisis which started a few years ago, one first victim was exactly Iceland. And after those financial problems in the country, they started to uh, apply again membership in the European Union. However, now the we are in the situation when the enthusiasm in Iceland is so, not so strong anymore so that they may not apply membership of the European Union. This is a little bit like it was with Malta. In Malta they had one government but very much wanted to become member and another government which didn't want. So if the government changed opposition came to the power then they stopped the negotiations. Uh, Montenegro. Negotiations have started and they are moving forward. And now there was quite a big surprise a few days ago when Kosovo and Serbia were able to fix the deal uh, with the assistance of Catherine Ashton, Chief of uh, European Union uh, Foreign Policy, so that Serbia is going to uh, 